Okay, hello and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be looking at a Chrome extension I put together over a couple of hours over a weekend that interacts with the with a website. So in this example, it interacts with Twitter and changes and manipulates the display of the page to add in new elements and add some more interactivity. So let's take a look at it straight away. Go to Twitter. So here you can see straight away that the um, display of the page has changed quite significantly. Now this overlay here is what the extension adds. So the main idea behind this is I found that whenever I went to Twitter and had an idea in mind of something that I wanted to tweet, I would often get distracted by the timeline and sometimes forget what I was going to even post. So this just helps you avoid that distraction when you first go to Twitter. You can like click on to explore for example and it will hide um, the overlay but if you go back it will display again and then if you want you can minimize it so you can sort of get the best of both or you can close it. Um, as well but then if you go back and then away and then back it will show again for you. Now this area down here is auto saving so it's just a useful place to note down any ideas that you have and then the next time you go to the page it will have remembered what you wrote down so you can sort of keep your ideas there. Um, and there's also a, a little character count up here so you can um, paste in sort of ideas you have from down here or type in new ones and it'll just show you in the corner how many characters you've made. Really simple, but just an extra bit of functionality in this new area that we've added in. So up here we also have a couple of links just to some resources um, that can help you sort of think about what you can tweet about. And that's it basically. There's just a button here that can take you straight to your lists so you can find specific information and things that you can interact with, which is quite a good thing to be doing on Twitter. Now that is all of the features apart from one um, which it's a, a video I made before on the channel and um, I just added this into the extension as well which allows you to search people's tweets. So if I was to search for Firebase for example it would show any tweets that I've made with Firebase. Um, but that's just a quick example of what the extension does. Um, now I'm going to jump over into the source code and just highlight some of the things and how it actually works. Okay so we're in the source code for the extension now and the first thing I want to show you is the manifest file. So Chrome have changed the sort of flow of how you can create extensions recently to be much more privacy focused and make you sort of put down extra information if you need extra permissions. So as you can see here, I haven't put down any permissions at all apart from the um, content script down here, the matches area so that we can actually add this content uh, script onto Twitter. Um, otherwise, you know, the, the extension won't work. So this is a great way to limit the amount of permissions you need to ask for. So only make sure you're asking for the permissions you really need to use. Otherwise, don't add them because it saves you so much time when you're actually submitting this to the Chrome store. Otherwise, everything here is self-explanatory. We've got our icons. Um, we've got a browser action icon. You don't have to have this, but it just helps um, to have that covered as well. And then just name description, all the standard stuff. So what this then does is it adds in this CSS and this JavaScript if it's on Twitter. So the, the JavaScript page just has this um, function at the top here that is listening to see if the URL changes at all. Most modern web apps now, especially if they're using things like React, the page can change without it reloading. So if you want your extension to be able to listen for these changes, you need a function like this that will just listen to see if the URL changes and then call a function. So when URL changes down here, we run this code. Um, I should have tidied it up a little bit. Um, but this basically just tells us that the URL has changed. So we have up here an array of different pages that Twitter has. So because we know that we will only want to run our overlay on the home page, we can check to make sure it's not any of these. And then if it's the profile, we then um, display our search tweets. So as you can see here, we check to make sure that this isn't any of that. If this isn't in our, our list of URLs, we run our code to check and see if we're on someone's profile so we can show the search tweets, which is what this um, call does down here. And if it's not, we make sure that we stop the timer. So one thing that we need to do when we have our search tweets is when the user's pe profile page loads up, it loads up in sections. So because we want to enter that search box into the corner, we need to wait for um, it's the, the main search box to appear. So once that's the on the page we can then insert our extra search box for that actual user below that but until that part appears on the page it won't work so we have to listen for that part to appear 
and then make sure you add a, a limiter so it won't just run as many times as possible. So the sensible limit is something like 10 or 20 times that it will run through and then check maybe half, every half a second um, after that. I'll show you how that works in a moment. Um, and then if the URL is um, the home page, we then add our little uh, whiteboards of the, the place that you can um, enter text and, and things like that. So this is our overlay. Um, and then otherwise we make sure that we hide our overlay if we're not on the home page. So again, really simple. We just check in to see are we on someone's profile or not? Are we on the home page or not? So that's all we do here. And then down here we have our um, timers. This is where we can stop the timers from running. So it stops again making those checks that I mentioned. And then if we are um, again down here, this is where it runs on the very first page. So when it first loads, it wouldn't trigger the URL has changed. So that's why we have two calls here. It should really be in a function that we initialize this in. But again, this was written really quickly to sort of show how easily you can put an extension together. So that's why we have this code in there twice. But when the page first loads, it goes here. And when the URL changes, it's the one that we saw a minute ago. So this is an example of the timer I was mentioning. So here we're listening to see if um, that area on the profile has appeared. So this function just here. And if it hasn't, we run it again to a maximum of 20 times. That's what this limit is just here. So then let's first look at the search tweets area. So that's further down here, just here. So what this basically does is when we're on this page, we're gonna grab the URL and take the profile username out of the URL. And then we're checking to see if this person's, if we're on the profile page. So because of the way Twitter works, if I just go back to here again and go to my profile, as you can see, this is on my, my name here. So twitter.com forward slash Russell Barnard. And then if I check my profile photo just here, if we look in the inspect element part of the page, you can see that there is a link here to my photo. Now this is only on uh, profile pages. So it's a good way to check if you're on a profile page or not. Now, if you wanna add this to a different domain name or a different website you wanna manipulate, you need to make sure you find these hooks that you can jump into that are unique to a certain page. So this, for example, is a great way of checking you're on a profile page. So once you find that's there, if we go back to the code, we check to see if this is there. So we're saying length query selector, you know, how many of these are on the page. Um, you could do, for example, if you wanted to check if there was two elements with that, you could put query selector all and then check the length of that. Because if you do query selector, that just gets the first item that matches. So by adding all, this is quite useful. Um, and you can see here, we're just doing um, any links that have this URL. So we're saying the username forward slash photo. And then this little I here, make sure this is case insensitive. So on Twitter, someone could type in, they could put a capital B just here, for example, and it would load the same page. But the if we then grab that um, from the URL and then try to check it here, this here is still lowercase. So you wanna make sure this is case insensitive so that you're always finding the right place. So again, that could be useful um, on extensions you're making. Um, and then all we're doing is saying, if we found that, we wanna run this code in here. So this is to grab the search box up here. And then as you can see, that says um, search, I'm looking, yeah, the placeholder here, search Twitter. So if we check, you can see that we're trying to grab the placeholder element or attribute, and then we're seeing if this says search Twitter. Once we've found that, we can then uh, be sure to stop the timer uh, just here. So as we mentioned, we're stopping that timer, and then we run the rest of our code down here, which actually adds the element and adds it into the, uh, inserts it before the different part of the page. So next we're gonna scroll up and look at the whiteboard area that we add uh, with our overlay. Okay, so here is our overlay code. So if we're on the Twitter homepage, we wanna add that overlay that hides the main timeline. So the way we do this, there's, there's two parts to it. So first we have this um, variable that we set here, which is to see if it's set up yet or not. So have we already run this code once um, on this page? So we set this to zero or false to begin with, um, in which we'll see that in a second. So otherwise we wanna grab and check if the 
um, overlay element is on the page. So what's the length of this item? If it hasn't been added to the page yet, then we need to run um, this code first that adds it to the page. So as we have lots of sites these days, there's a dark mode, a light mode, and various styles that you can have um, for the actual display of the page. Now for Twitter, they have a light mode, a dim mode, and a dark mode. So we wanna detect which one of these we're in, and then we set this to a variable here, which we apply to the overlay itself. So we can use this later down in styling the actual display of our extension. So then we just set some basic HTML here. So here's the items, um, the sort of mini navigation items that we add to the top of the overlay, our links, then we have our, our word count area, and then this is the area that we um, have our auto saving text box. So again, it's really, really simple, but it just does exactly what we need. Um, then we append this whole um, element onto the bottom of the body. So as you can see here, this is the, we create this div, set the class, and just fill in the inner HTML and then append it to the bottom of the page. And then we have a couple of bits of code here that works out how we should minimize and maximize it. So it uses the um, width of the page and then we work out how far across the header part is so we can minimize and maximize away from this. Um, and then as we mentioned um, before that, and also we stop the timer um, on this page. So the only reason we need a timer for this is to grab the um, navigation to so the header area. So if you see this one just here, when it first loads, this navigation is um, invisible. So it's not always on the page. So once it's there and has a width that we can actually grab, we can then use that so that we can position our overlay just to the side of this. So that's the only reason we have that timer there. Ideally, we don't need to use these because they're not the best to use. Um, but for most sites, there is that slight delay um, that you need to listen for. So they're a good example to use, but make sure you do have a limit set on those whenever you use them. Um, and then here's that setup uh, function we mentioned, or the setup check. So if it hasn't been set up yet, we set a number of event listeners. So here's the first one here for our text area. And this just sets into our local storage um, what they've been typing. So each time you finish either pasting into there or you finish typing a word, we save whatever you've changed. Um, and then the same down here for the uh, text area where we're doing the counts on key up, we check um, how many words you've typed in or how many characters. And the same thing if you paste into there as well. Um, and then we just have event listeners for the clicks. So if you want to display the character count, if you want to minimize, if you want to jump to the list page and so on and so forth. And at the bottom here, we just set the setup to one so that this only runs once, otherwise you have that multiple events um, being triggered, which you want to always avoid. So that is how you can uh, quickly put together a Chrome extension that can manipulate and adjust um, a web page. So if you've got any questions on how I've done, uh, gone about any of the things in this extension, just let me know in the comments. Um, otherwise, it'd be great to hear ideas you've got for building extensions and the types of websites that you want to adjust um, out there. Because I think it's so important to make sure, even if it's only you that's going to um, use the extension, if it's going to help you, you know, create more or get more things done in a productive way, it's a great example of an extension to make. And then as you can see here, I've got my CSS that applies um, onto these areas as well. So I've got the dark mode, light mode, dim mode, all in there. But anyway, thanks for watching. And if you've got any questions like I mentioned, just leave a comment below. Um, and subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like this.